Peanut and the Trip by A. L. Don French It had been a few weeks now that school had to be closed because of the pandemic. Peanut missed going to Lorette's Park to play. She missed going down to the river to catch crabs. She missed going to visit Mr. Lucas, the old man down the street. Every Sunday, Peanut would get on her bicycle and deliver lunch to Mr. Lucas. They would chat about all sorts of things. Peanut thought taught Mr. Lucas' letters and numbers, and he would tell her stories that were really the history of the island. Oh, how she missed him. Today, Mom was the one who was going to bring lunch to Mr. Lucas. Can I come too? Please, Peanut begged. I will be good. I'll stay in the car. I won't come out, Peanut promised. You promise? Mom was not too sure. I promise, Peanut confirmed. You promise? Mom asked again. I promise, Peanut replied. All right, Mom allowed. Yippee, Peanut yelled. But there are rules, Mom warned. Okay, Peanut waited. Number one, we have to wear a face mask. Number two, you will sit at the back of the car, but not behind me. We must keep distance between us. Number three, you will stay in the car. Yes, Mom, Peanut said. Number four, when we get back, the first thing that we must do is to place our clothes in the laundry and take a shower. Then we can go and be with others. We don't want the virus coming home with us. Peanut nodded, but Mom was not done. Do you agree, Sabine? Mom was using her proper name, so Peanut knew that this was serious business. Yes, Mom, Peanut said. Not even a smile. Good girl. Now, where is your face mask? Peanut went to get it. Her mask had Rottweilers on it because her dog Dax was a Rotty. Her mom's mask had parrots like the St. Lucian parrot. The scientific name of the St. Lucian parrot was the Amazona versicola, but the Creole name was Jaco. Do you know the correct way to put on your mask? Mom asked. There is a correct way? I just put it on, Peanut confessed. Mom smiled. Let me show you. Peanut watched as her mom showed her what to do. Hold your mask in the palm of your hand with the straps over the back of your hand. Place the mask over your nose and mouth. The top string goes overhead and the bottom string goes below closer to the back of your neck. Peanut started to copy what her mom did. It was easy because the straps on her mask were elastic and she did not have to tie them. Mom continued, pinch the nose, nose bridge of the mask. Make sure that no air escapes on sides when you breathe in and out. As usual, wash your hands before you put the mask on and after. We can also use hand sanitizer. There was a bottle nearby, but Peanut washed her hands at the sink instead. Great, Mom said. When we return home, we'll take the mask off by bending over slightly to get it off. First, remove the bottom string, followed by the top string. And just like we do with tissue paper, we throw the mask into the garbage bin. Then wash our hands again. Peanut was beginning to understand. Mom grinned. Exactly. Especially if you accidentally touch the front of your mask, you should wash or sanitize your hands to get rid of any germs that may be on your hands. Peanut nodded. Both she and mom had the face mask on. They were ready to go to visit Mr. Lucas. Peanut did as her mom said and climbed into the back of the car. But she did not sit behind her mom. They had to sit far away from each other as they could. It was another nice sunny day. There were not many people out on the streets because everyone had been asked to stay at home because the virus could jump between people. Her mom had special permission to visit Mr. Lucas, and so she had a pass. They went past the bus stop, and there were a few people waiting for the bus. They stood far apart, and they, had, and they all had face masks on. Peanut knew that like her mother, they had special permission to be out and about. They drove past Laureate's Park. It was one of Peanut's favorite places. She liked to ride her bicycle there. As they went by the green place, there was no one there, but Peanut could see lots of birds walking around looking for bugs and worms. The place was called Laureate's Park because of St. Lucia's four laureates. 
Sir Arthur Lewis and Sir Derek Walcott were Nobel laureates. Dr. Adrian Auger and Mr. Jalim Yudovic were Sabgaro laureates. The park was a nice big green space with lots of trees and flowers. There was a pool where children could play and ducks could swim. There were many benches too where folks sat on sunny days, but today it was empty. To Peanut it felt like overnight, schools were closed, businesses were shut down, parks and beaches were empty and the once bustling streets of a neighborhood now looked like a ghost town. As they drove along, Peanut and Mom chatted. Tell me other reasons we may use a face mask, Mum asked. Peanut thought for a moment and answered. I remember Uncle Fulton used one when he painted the barn. We had to wear one when we helped Nana to clean out the garage. Bass needed one for his woodworking class. Peanut's eldest brother Sebastian attended the Diamond Falls Comprehensive Secondary School. Well done! Sometimes Auntie Scylla has to use one when there is lots of pollen in the air, Mum added. Mum had a list too. Soldiers sometimes have to wear a face mask. Sports people wear face masks too, like in hockey and fencing. It was not a long ride and soon they were at Mr. Lucas' house. Peanut remained in the car as she had promised. She watched as her mum got out, picked up the basket and walked to the balcony. She placed it on the table that was there, knocked on the front door and walked away. Soon, the old man came out. Mr. Lucas, Peanut called and waved. He waved back and came down the steps. Hello, how are you? Peanut had a question. Peanut always had questions because she wanted to know things. Mr. Lucas, when you were little, did you have curfews like we do now? Mom waited to hear his answer too. Peanut... I am 83 years old. I have seen wars, the Great Castries Fire of 1948, Plywood City of 1982, and hurricanes too numerous to mention. In all my years, we have never had a curfew. You are living in historic times, and when you are my age, you will have a story to tell your children and your grandchildren. My mom says the same thing. That during the war, there were blackouts where people covered their windows so that they could not be bombed by enemy planes, but never a curfew. Mum said, and I certainly do not know of any time that we have had any, not even for hurricanes that caused so much damage. I believe that we will be all right. We have curfews and social distancing and people helping people. It will be okay, Mr. Lucas believed. Peanut liked that idea very much. I like that. Oh yes, you will ride your bike everywhere. We will play in the park on Sundays. We will chat like we always do, Mr. Lucas said. Yes, Mum agreed and got into the car. They drove away and Peanut waved at Mr. Lucas through the window. The streets were still empty. So were the sidewalks, bus stands and the park. This time, they were stopped by police officers. They had face masks on too. Good day. May I see your driver's license? Why are you out and about? Good day, officer. I am on my way home. We went to deliver food supplies to an 83-year-old man, Mr. Lucas, who lives down the road. I have a pass. Mum handed over her license. Hi, Corporal Placid, Peanut waved. Hey, Peanut, the lady officer replied. Mum waited as Corporal Placid double-checked the pass, took a quick look at the license, then handed it back and said, straight home. We promise. Mum accepted her license and drove away. Bye, Peanut waved at Corporal Placid and, and Corporal Placid waved back. When they got home, they did as Mum had described. They took the mask off by bending over slightly. Then they removed the bottom string followed by the top string. They threw the mask in the garbage, placed the clothes in the laundry basket, then took a shower. Peanut thought about what Mr. Lucas said. She missed her friends. They had the internet and they were able to chat. But it was so much fun to be in the park. She would be happy when this was all over. The end. Until the next adventure.